Okay, so today we're going to measure the copper content of brass using spectrophotometry. Before we do that, we have to get our copper into solution. We do this by dissolving it in nitric acid. As you can see from the reaction on the left, nitric acid plus copper gives you copper nitrate, which is soluble in water, nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas you can see, and water. It suffices to say, do not try this at home. That brown gas is highly toxic and this reaction is being carried out in an efficient fume hood with all the requisite safety equipment. So let's have a quick look at how we've set this up. The first thing we did was we weighed out exactly approximately two grams of brass shavings. That is, we know precisely how much we've weighed out. We then put that into the fume hood and we measure out approximately 10 milliliters of nitric acid. It's very important we know exactly how much brass not so important we know how much nitric acid, since the amount of nitric acid, as long as there's an excess, isn't going to affect the amount of copper that we have in solution. You should be aware that nitric acid is highly corrosive and oxidizing, so it's important to have lab goggles, gloves, and a lab coat on at all times, and to carry this reaction out inside the fume hood. Great, so now we have our copper dissolved, what are we going to do with it? Well, after waiting two to three minutes, letting it swirl, it'll still be quite hot. So the first thing we want to do is wash down the sides of the flask, make sure there's no bits of brass around the place that haven't reacted yet, and just let it cool down for a minute. Then we want to take it and put it into a known volume of solution. So to do that we use a volumetric flask. In this case we're going to use a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, which means if we take our 1.9598 grams of brass and dissolve it in 100 milliliters of water, that's the equivalent of having 19.598 grams in one liter of water. We'll come back to why that's important later in this experiment. For now we're going to look at quantitative transfer. So if we want to do this experiment accurately, it's very important that every little bit of copper or every little bit of dissolved brass makes it from the beaker into the volumetric flask. So you can see what I'm doing here, I'm carefully washing down the sides of the beaker and when I finish washing down the sides of the beaker I'm going to transfer that into the funnel. Once I've washed down the beaker and I'm satisfied that there's absolutely no copper inside the beaker, I'm going to wash down the funnel, finish washing down the funnel, and then I can be satisfied that all of the copper has made it out of the beaker, there's none left on the funnel, and it's all inside the volumetric flask. Once we have it all transferred into the volumetric flask, then all we have to do is make it up to the line. Well, to make it up to the line, we have to make sure that the bottom of the meniscus lines up exactly with the marked line on the side of the flask. It's important that when you view the line, you view it from exactly parallel, so that you shouldn't unlike what's going on in this video, be able to see the line on the back of the flask because the line on the front should completely block it. We're close, but not perfectly parallel in this situation. In fact, were we viewing it from the correct angle, we would see that this brings it to the line and means that it has a volume of exactly 100 milliliters. So now we have our sample prepared, we need to prepare some standards to measure it against. To do that, we weigh out exactly a known amount of copper. In our case, we're going to use copper chloride and we're going to weigh out 13.4196 grams. If we know what the molecular formula is, we can work out exactly how much copper that corresponds to. So to do that, again, we do the same quantitative transfer. This time, there's slightly more steps in it. We transfer from the weigh boat, carefully washing it out so that it's all into the beaker. And then once we have it in the beaker, what we're going to do is we're going to add in sufficient liquid to dissolve it so that it's easier to transfer into the volumetric flask. It's a bad idea to transfer solids directly into a volumetric flask, as it can be very difficult to stir them and get them to dissolve properly once they're in there. One thing you should remember when you're adding liquid into something before you transfer it into a volumetric flask is that you don't want to end up with more liquid than fits in the volumetric flask, because if you do that, you'll have to start all over again. The same as if you miss the line, you have to start all over again. So it's best to do it right the first time by being slow and accurate. So now we're going to speed this up a little bit. Add in somewhere between 1 and 200 milliliters of water, take up your glass rod, and start stirring. It'll take one or two minutes to actually stir this into a solution. Once it's in a solution, it's ready to go in. Okay, so this time now we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to quantitatively transfer this once it's dissolved into our volumetric flask. Our volumetric flask has a volume of 250 milliliters. If you paused the video earlier and looked at my maths, you would have noticed that I said that there were 5 grams of copper in the 13.4196 grams of copper chloride that we weighed out. This means if we make it up to a volume of 250 milliliters, there'll be the equivalent of 20 grams of copper per liter. That's now our standard solution, provided we do our quantitative transfer correctly. We make a solution of 20 grams of copper per liter. Again, 
all the same steps of quantitative transfer. We want to be absolutely sure that every bit of copper that we weighed out is now in our volumetric flask before we make it up to the line. So we wash, rinse repeatedly, make sure we rinse down the glass rod, rinse down the funnel, take it out, and then we get ready to make it up to the line. Again, make sure that we're looking exactly parallel along and then bring it up so that the bottom of the meniscus lines up exactly with that line. Be very careful doing this because if you go too far, you'll have to start again. Okay, so very last step then before we're finished. Make sure that the stopper is in place, twist it and push down, and then put your thumb on the top, grab it by the stem and invert it 20 times. Once we're finished making up our standard, we can dilute it down into several different concentrations by pipetting different amounts into 100ml volumetric flasks and making each of those up to the line. Then we're ready to get the UV vis spectrometer out and start making our measurements. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, post a comment below, post a comment up on Moodle, or ask in the lab, ask your lecturer. Remember, don't try this at home, and if you're going to try it in the lab, make sure that you have all the necessary PPE before you begin, especially in efficient fume mode.